Hello people, in this video let us look at what conjunctiva is, okay? So, where are we? We are looking at the eye. So, conjunctiva is a translucent mucous membrane. It's just a mucous membrane, remember. It's a translucent mucous membrane. And where and all is it? It is there in the posterior surface of your eyelids and the anterior aspect of eyeball. So, it is a translucent mucous membrane. Where and all will you find it? It's a translucent mucous membrane which is there behind your eyelid right and in front of your eyeball anterior surface of your eyeball so here and all it's there right okay and don't forget it is also there behind your upper eyelid which we have not marked so conjunctiva is a translucent mucous membrane which lines the posterior surface of your eyelid and the anterior surface of your eyeball so, as it is transparent or translucent, you cannot see it. Hence, you will find the anatomy to be a little difficult. It is not there here. See, it is not there here. This is a place where you will not find conjunctiva. This is cornea. Here, you will not find conjunctiva. The translucent mucous membrane is not there here. Okay. So, where and all uh, is conjunctiva? Let's look at this. It is a translucent mucous membrane which lines the Posterior surface of your eyelid, so don't forget upper eyelid, behind upper eyelid and before behind lower eyelid, both the places it is there, behind both the eyelids and the anterior aspect of eyeball, but not over the cornea, right? <clears throat> now, this posterior surface of eyelid, that conjunctiva is called as palpebral conjunctiva, anterior aspect of eyeball that is called as bulbar conjunctiva. Okay, so this will be behind your eyelid, whatever conjunctiva is there. So, behind your eyelid, whatever conjunctiva is there, that is called as what? This is the palpebral conjunctiva. Okay. And in front of the eyeball, anterior surface of eyeball, whatever you have, that is called as the bulbar conjunctiva. Here you have the bulbar conjunctiva. Okay. So, did you understand where is palpebral and where, where palpebral is and where bulbar conjunctiva is? What is highlighted now? Bulbar conjunctiva. So, this one will be palpebral conjunctiva okay so where are the eyelids so can you spot the upper eyelid here this is the upper eyelid and this is the lower eyelid correct so behind the eyelid whatever conjunctiva you have it is called as what palpebral conjunctiva so where is the palpebral conjunctiva here behind your eyelid you have the palpebral conjunctiva where is the bulbar conjunctiva anterior aspect of your eyeball right so here you have the bulbar conjunctiva now the one that connects these two that is the palpebral conjunctiva and the bulbar conjunctiva wherever it, they are connected that is called as the conjunctival fornix okay so here also you have palpebral conjunctiva bulbar conjunctiva and here you have the conjunctival fornix so so far you have understood that there are three parts of the conjunctiva so you have the palpebral conjunctiva bulbar conjunctiva and the conjunctival fornix so, conjunctiva, you have understood, it is a, a translucent mucous membrane which lines the posterior surface of the eyelids and the anterior aspect of the eyeball. Why is it called conjunctiva? Because you have heard of conjoint twins and all that. Basically, it is joining something. What is it joining? So, this will help your eyelids stick to your eyeball. So, the conjunctiva is like here also one layer of gum kind of thing. Here also a layer of gum kind of thing. It helps it stick the eyelid to the eyeball. Did you understand? It's not actually gum. It is translucent mucous membrane. It helps join join what and all the eyelid to the eyeball or the eyeball to the eyelid it helps join keep them together okay now this also encloses a complex space called as conjunctival sac now where is this conjunctival sac let's look this word so here you have the conjunctival sac right so the conjunctival okay so palpebral has how many parts three parts marginal tarsal orbital let's look at these so here you have the marginal guys right? marginal tarsal and then orbital okay three things see here marginal tarsal orbital so marginal conjunctiva basically it extends from the lid margin to about two millimeter on the back of lid up to a shallow groove the sulcus subtarsalis so somewhere till some sub sulcus subtarsalis it is there it is uh, the, let's read this again guys focus a uh, marginal conjunctiva extends from the lid margin okay from the lid margin wherever that is uh, to about 2 millimeter on the back 
of lead up to a shallow groove, the sub sulcus subparsalis. Okay, it is actually a transitional zone between the skin and the conjunctiva proper. So here you have skin and here you have conjunctiva. So marginal conjunctiva is a uh, transitional zone between the skin and the conjunctiva proper. From, from where it all it is, it is from the lid margin till some uh, about 2 mm on the back of a lid up to the shallow groove called a sulcus subtarsalis. Okay. Then next we have the tarsal conjunctiva. Tarsal conjunctiva seems to be from here to here. Okay. So from where, is, uh, from where and where, let's focus, uh, from where to where is this tarsal conjunctiva which is a part of what? Of what? Of what? Palpebral conjunctiva. Very good. It is a thin transparent and highly vascular. It is vascular. So it is highly vascular uh, conjunctiva. It is firmly adherent to the whole tarsal plate in the upper lid. Okay, in the upper lid it is adherent uh, to the whole tarsal plate in the upper lid. In the lower lid it is adherent only to half width of the tarsus. Okay, upper lid it is nicely adherent. The tarsal glands are seen through it as yellow streaks. So under this you can see what can you see? Tarsal glands as what? As yellow streaks. It is a very thin and transparent and uh, membranes, uh, thin and transparent uh, conjunctiva. So you can see through it and what will you see? Yellow streaks. What is that? Tarsal glands. What is the third part of the palpable conjunctiva guys? The orbital. The orbital conjunctiva, it is from where to where? Okay, wait. Orbital part of palpable conjunctiva lies loose between the tarsal plate and fornix. So it is between the tarsal plate and fornix. It lies loose between the tarsal. So here we have the fornix. We are sure of that. So it lies loose between the tarsal plate and the fornix. Can you name the three parts of the palpable conjunctiva? Palpable conjunctiva has three parts. Marginal, tarsal and orbital. Very good. Next let us move on to which conjunctiva? Bulbar conjunctiva. In that also you have some parts. Where is bulbar conjunctiva? Over the eyeball. Right? So here you have the bulbar conjunctiva. Okay. Is it there here? No. That is the cornea. We don't have it there. We have it only here. This is the bulbar conjunctiva. Up, upper and lower both we have marked. Okay. So bulbar conjunctiva guys, it is having some part under it called limbar, limbal conjunctiva. So what is bulbar conjunctiva? It is thin, transparent, it is thin, it is transparent and it lies loose over the underlying structures and thus can be moved easily. Don't try to move it, don't put your hand over this white part of the eye and move. Actually if you move it, it will move. Okay, the bulbar conjunctiva, this if you just put your finger and try to move it, it will move. It is a thin, what is bulbar conjunctiva? Thin, transparent and it lies loose over the underlying structures and thus can be moved easily. Just look at this diagram here, okay. Let us say, here you have the, hold on. Just, just no, don't zoom this. See here, what they are showing. From outside to inside we will go, okay. First you have the tear film, right. First you have the tear film. Below that you have the bulbar conjunctiva. What do you have below the bulbar conjunctiva? The tenon capsule. Behind the tenon capsule you have the episclera. Behind that you have the sclera. Sclera is the white part, right, that you see. So what is there uh, ahead of the sclera? In anterior to the sclera you have the episcleral tissue, then you have the tenon capsule, then you have the bulbar conjunctiva and in front of the bulbar conjunctiva you also have the tear film. Did you understand anything at all? So these, uh, whatever you see, you have the tear film, <clears throat> then you have the bulbar conjunctiva, <clears throat> tenon capsule, episcleral tissue, sclera. So this is the sclera, this is the white part of the eye, right, of the eyeball. Simple question, now somebody asks what is separating the uh, bulbar conjunctiva from the sclera. Bulbar conjunctiva from the sclera, who is separating episclera and tenon capsule, right. Who is separating them? Episcleral tissue and tenon capsule, that's it, okay. So then uh, the a 3 mm ridge of bulbar conjunctiva which is around the cornea, it is called as the limbal conjunctiva. So limbal conjunctiva is this portion, 3 mm ridge around the cornea, 3 mm ridge of bulbar conjunctiva around the cornea is called as limbal conjunctiva. So this has some special name you should know. So you have limbal conjunctiva. In the area of limbus, the conjunctiva, the tenons capsule and the episcleral tissue are fused into a dense tissue which is strongly adherent to the underlying corneoscleral junction. So here what happens, what and all are uh, uh, sticking to each other at this limbal conjunctiva, you have three layers which are coming and sticking nicely. It is the uh, episcleral tissue, then the tenon capsule and the conjunctiva. So these three, 
the episcleral tissue, tenon capsule and bulbar conjunctiva at the limbal conjunctive, uh, at the limbus, these three are nicely fused together. Did you understand guys? Let's read this again. In the area of the limbus, the conjunctiva, the tenon's capsule and the episcleral tissue are fused into a dense tissue which is strongly adherent to the underlying corneoscleral junction. Okay, then what else are they saying here? The epithelium, the epithelium of conjunctiva becomes continuous with that of the cornea. So this is the area, limbal conjunctiva, that will be somewhere here, let us say. Okay, the limbal conjunctiva, the epithelium of the conjunctiva becomes continuous with that of the cornea. Okay, so which is cornea? This portion is cornea. Here you don't have conjunctiva. Okay, but the cornea has epithelium and the conjunctiva has epithelium. Those two are becoming continuous at the limbus. Okay, so what is this epithelium? Now you need to understand that, right? This is the structure of the conjunctiva, microscopic structure. See, the conjunctiva itself has microscopically, microscopically so many layers. You have the epithelium, then you have the adenoid layer and the fibrous layer. So if this is your eye, right and there is conjunctiva on top of it so what will be there in that epithelium adenoid layer and fibrous layer okay so this epithelium of the conjunctiva will become continuous with the epithelium of the cornea cornea will also have epithelium that will become continuous with the epithelium of the cornea at what point at the limbal conjunctiva at the limbus you can say okay so where are we so now we have to look at the third part that is the conjunctival fornix. Okay, we have looked at the palpebral, we have looked at the bulbar. Guys, what are we looking, going to look at now? Conjunctival fornix. Very good. So now conjunctival fornix is what, what we have understood is this part, right? This part is the conjunctival fornix. It connects the palpebral at the bulbar conjunctiva. So it is basically a continuous circular clued sac. Yeah, it looks like a sac. It is broken only on the medial side by the caruncle. Okay, whereas the caruncle and plica semilunar is here, right? So it is broken, it is actually continuous circular, but it is broken only on the medial side by the caruncle and the plica semilunaris. Conjunctival fornix joins the bulbar conjunctiva with the palpebral conjunctiva. Again, uh, that you understood, it is connecting the pal pal palpebral conjunctiva and the bulbar conjunctiva. And it can be divided into superior, inferior, medial, lateral fornices. As easy as that, you can divide into superior, inferior, medial, lateral, as everything in anatomy can be done. Now, let us go to the structure of conjunctiva. Structure of conjunctiva, guys, where we saw that already, right here. So, this is the microscopic structure of conjunctiva. So, here you have the epithelium. They have shown you the epithelium here. This can ha be different number of layers in different places. We will look at that. Then you have the adenoid layer and the fibrous layer. Look at the epithelium now. So, let us say this is the corneal epithelium, right? Here they have shown only epithelium, they have not shown other layers. This is 2 to 5 layer. The epithelium, uh, we are talking about the conjunctival epithelium, that is this, okay, all this. They are showing only the epithelium here. The conjunctival epithelium, uh, it is 2 to 5 layer non-keratinized epithelium. It contains goblet cells which constitute 10% of the epithelium. So it can secrete all that uh, mucus and all that, right? So it has what? Goblet cells. Guys, don't forget, where are the goblet cells? You have the goblet cells in the conjunctiva. So, there are a lot of glands in conjunctiva. You will be very surprised to know that there are glands in conjunctiva. So, where are the glands in conjunctiva? Here you have some glands of cross. See here? Glands of cross. Then you have glands of mans or something. Right? Then here you have something else. What else? Wolf ring. Where is this? Glands of wolf ring. Are these all in the conjunctiva? Yes. So, glands of conjunctiva, so many other. Remember, uh, the conjunctiva has goblet cells which can secrete mucin, mucin secretory glands. So, basically, the layers of epithelium varies from region to region. Let us look at how it varies. So, in some areas, it will be five layered. Some areas, it is only uh, two layered, etc. Let us see. Marginal conjunctiva, it is five layered stratified squamous type of epithelium. Tarsal, in tarsal, it is only two layered. What about, uh, and in tarsal, that it is two layered, it is superficial, will be cylindrical. Yes, we can see that and deep layer will be flat. Okay, that also we can see. So, tarsal it is two and it is cylindrical and flat. Okay, then coming to fornix and bulbar conjunctiva. In fornix and bulbar conjunctiva, it has three layered epithelium. Okay, fornix and bulbar. In limbal conjunctiva, again, five to six layers. So, Limbal conjunctiva, 5 to 6 layers. This is the highest we saw here. Here we saw around 5, they said. Here now they are saying 5 to 6 in limbal conjunctiva. Okay, so this is the differences in the number of layers in the epithelium of the conjunctiva. Did you get it, guys? This is just going over your head. 
don't remember break your head so much epithelium is having different number of layers in different places so if you have just written here here limbal conjunctiva five to six layers of epithelium marginal has five layers of epithelium something like that if you want you can remember then move on to the next layer adenoid layer so adenoid layer is also called as lymphoid layer okay what is it also called as lymphoid layer let's make it purple lymphoid layer it consists of fine connective tissue reticulum fine connective tissue reticulum in the meshes of which lie lymphocytes so there is lot of lymphocyte here the layer is most developed in the fornices so where is the adenoid layer best developed in the fornices in the fornices it will be nicely developed the adenoid layer and this adenoid layer will be absent at birth at birth this layer adenoid layer will not be present it will be not uh, up to like 3 to 4 months uh, you can say it's now they develops after 3 to 4 months of life that is why when an infant gets conjunctival inflammation it does not produce follicular lesions so why there is no follicular lesions in an infant if they ask you will say that that is infant less than 4 years something it develops only 4 months sorry 3 to 4 months after life so if a infant has a conjunctival conjunctival inflammation that time there will be no follicular reaction okay that is because of this adenoid layer being absent in a in an infant then coming to fibrous layer guys we are moving on to fibrous layer now what are we looking at we are looking at the microscopic structure of conjunctiva the fibrous layer it consists of meshwork of collagen and elastic fibers okay this collagen and elastic fibers it is thicker than adenoid layer so it is a thicker layer and um, it is thick mostly everywhere except in the region of tarsal conjunctiva where it is very thin because in tarsal tar tarsal conjunctiva we told you the conjunctiva is very thin and it's transparent you can see the tarsal glands underneath yellow streaks so obviously in the uh, tarsal conjunctiva this fibrous layer will be very thin except the uh, that everywhere else it will be thick this layer consists vessels and nerves of conjunctiva so where are the vessels and nerves of conjunctiva in the fibrous layer this layer consists vessels and nerves of conjunctiva it blends with the underlying tenon capsule in the region of bulbar conjunctiva very good so what is behind the bulb uh, the bulbar conjunctiva obviously the tenon capsule so the, the innermost layer is the fibrous layer of the conjunctiva so the fibrous layer will be blending with the tenon capsule if it is bulbar conjunctiva the fibrous layer will be blending with the tenon capsule but if it's palpebral conjunctiva what will happen to the fibrous layer it should be kind of going with the skin what do you say so people let's take a recap in this video we started off with conjunctiva to understand what it is it is a translucent mucous membrane which lines the posterior surface of the eyelids and the anterior aspect of the eye ball so you have the posterior to the eyelid you have the palpebral conjunctiva and on the eye ball that is this white part you have the bulbar conjunctiva the conjunctiva which is right just around the cornea is called as the limbal conjunctiva okay so these uh, uh, two that is the palpebral conjunctiva and the bulbar conjunctiva are joined together by this conjunctiva which is called as the conjunctival fornix okay and uh, each of this uh, will have different parts like the palpebral conjunctiva has three parts marginal tarsal orbital bulbar conjunctiva has limbal conjunctiva as a part of it and conjunctival fornix you have superior inferior medial lateral etc so this is the conjunctival sac So here you saw the different parts of each uh, conjunctiva. Here you have the marginal conjunctiva, which is continuous with the skin kind of a thing. Then you have the tarsal conjunctiva, which is uh, thin and transparent. You can see the yellow streaks under it, which is showing you the tarsal glands. Then you have the orbital conjunctiva, which is kind of loose. They said. Then you have the fornix. Then you have the bulbar conjunctiva, and here you have the limbal conjunctiva. So what did we see? What else did we see? We saw that. the microscopic structure of conjunctiva we saw it has epithelium adenoid layer and fibrous layer in different parts of the conjunctiva the epithelium will have different layers so just to remember you can say marginal conjunctiva five layers of epithelium limbal conjunctiva five to six layers of conjunct uh, epithelium okay then what else glands also around little we have looked at the conjunctiva the epithelium will have goblet cells then you have a lot of other glands glands of mans glands of cross glands of wolf ring so many crypts of henley this is not that uh, kidney one so many glands are also there okay so we still have to look at plica semilunaris caruncle blood supply of conjunctiva then what else nerve supply of conjunctiva all this we have to look at so that's all for now in conjunctiva guys did you understand where will the nerve supply and blood supply be more in the fibrous layer of the conjunctiva that part you have understood right so the blood supply and nerve supply more in the fibrous layer okay so that's all for now guys we'll meet you in the next video bye bye